Welcome back to the channel where today we're going to be cleaning a bit of a grubby one. Now, since we picked up our little E36 drift car, we've been having a bit too much fun in it. and we forgot to introduce it to you guys. So as you can see, it's in a bit of a state. So we're gonna get it down in the wash bay, get it cleaned down and show you every step of the process as we detail what could be one of the grubbiest cars to date. Let's go. <sighs> We are down in our new wash bay at our HQ. As you can see, we are fully set up to do tons of wet work here, whether the car's grubby or clean. We've got water reclamation, we've got full drainage, we have everything. So we've got a nice clean space where we can get these grubby cars cleaned up to a T. With the E36 now sitting there, kind of dawned on me how good a job I've done of getting this really dirty. I did have a couple of offs, hence why it's got so much mud and dirt up it. It's all a learning curve, right? So now I've got to correct my wrongs and give this a good clean up. I'm gonna start off by rinsing as much of this dirt off as possible because whilst this might be a drift car for us, we still want it to look good. Dragging around dirt on the surface is what's gonna cause swirls and scratches and dull down that finish. So a thorough rinse, as always, we're gonna start with the wheels, work our way up onto the bodywork. Then we're gonna get in some of the nooks and crannies before we get it deconned in our brand new bay, which we'll show you in a moment and get on with some machine polishing. Oh my God, keep it moving, you gas. That rinsed off really well. I weren't, I weren't actually expecting it to come out that good just from a jet wash. <laughs> Somebody has not cleaned the barrels though, look at that. There's some lovely orange brake dust up in there from over the years. These wheels probably won't stay on this car that long. If anybody that knows me knows I've got a bit of a wheel fetish, so they will definitely be coming off. But for practicing on, they do the job. So I'm gonna try and clean them up my best. I'm gonna get a bit of reactive going on in these barrels, try and break that down. Hopefully we can remove that start on the barrel, work my way onto the face, I'll then scrub up the tire, jet wash the arch out, repeat that on all four corners, and then we'll hit the bodywork. Oi! <laughs> Ooh, the ASMR. Everything's getting hashtag ASMR now. Love it, you've got to get right in there, haven't you? Gish in it. No one wants a dirty barrel, do they? They don't want a dirty barrel. What is it that causes it to go purple? That is a reaction with ferrous metal. So there's basically an acid in iron removers, reactive wheel cleaners, things like that, that when they hit ferrous metal contamination, which is what your brake discs and brake pads kick out, it turns purple. That is actually the product reacting. So it's actually an indicator when you're using it on bodywork to remove contamination that's on there, usually rail dust or industrial fallout, that indicates that there's actually contamination present. So these color changing wheel cleaners originally whenever colour changing wheel cleaners, they were used to remove bonded contaminant metal particles from paintwork. But now, people found out they work really, really well on wheels. So every wheel cleaner is now 
an iron remover basically. Hey, you get cold in that field, tell them niggas bundle up. But them vultures on your head, why you trying to cuddle up? Pillows talking with that bra, but she down to set you up. Yeah, the first one to cross you, be the one you say you love. And that is how you clean a wheel and get a face full of wheel and tyre cleaner at the same time. But I thought I'd clean one, it'd be like 60 minute makeover. People would swarm in, do the rest. I'd look like a hero. Then they'd fix the one that I didn't do properly. <laughs> With the wheels washed, we're now gonna work on the bodywork. Now, we'll rinse off as much loose dirt as we can. Then we're gonna lay some snow foam over the top. Let that sit for as long as possible to break down as much as possible. Nice thing about a snow foam is it's going to get in all the gaps because remember a lot of this has got on there wet and run behind places where we can't easily get access. So we're going to leave it on there to do its thing. Hopefully it will get behind those parts, break that dirt down. We'll give it a real thorough rinse off and fingers crossed there won't be too much left on this car for when we come into contact with it on the wash stage. <laughs> Fixed it. Little bash. One of them. Good to go. When you wash yourself, you don't start your feet and work up, do you? I'm trying to wash the dirt off. Same with a car. You want to start from the top, rinse the dirt down. Simple as that. That's my theory. Do you know what I mean? It's all relative. If you get the results and you want to rinse upwards, you end up pushing dirt up the car, all behind the trims. I don't think it's the right one, but I'm sure someone on here, you filmed all of that, haven't you? Someone will be like, oh, you must rinse from the side skirt up to the roof. If that works for you, keep doing it. This works for me. So while the snow foam's dwelling and doing this thing, you can see we've got these big grills on the bonnet. That has let quite a lot of dirty water and grime get through there. So I'm gonna pop the hood, I'm gonna rinse that out. I'm not gonna go nuts. There's a lot of electrics under here. I don't know the car. We have just bought it already built and I'd really like it to start so we can still get it in the bay down there. But we'll get the worst of it off. Oh, you haven't seen this bit yet on camera, have you? That's why I bought an E36. Because it's got a Toyota engine and a really big turbo in it. Why do they talk like gangsters? Why they don't move like gangsters? Why do they walk like gangsters? Why they don't move like gangsters? Why do they act like gangsters? Why they don't move like gangsters? Why do they rap like gangsters? Why they don't move like gangsters? I've got it all open. Look at the state of me. Oh my God. <laughs> That's about all I'm doing in there. I'll do the rest inside with a steamer, but I don't want to go too nuts on the engine bay. Like I say, I don't really know the car. I don't know what the electrics are like. We are going to rebuild the loom in it because it looks like it's like a mismatch of two or three looms. It's good and it works, but it's just not 100% tidy. Change don't change like it used to. Who runs the roost round here? The coop's gone clear. That's a spot a lot of people miss. See, the, like where your wing mirror is, you're inside here. You have to just get in and around that. I hate it when you sit in a car and you look at the wing mirror and it's still all dirty in there. So many people miss it. 
You know what I hate? Hmm? When you get a brush out and don't give me a brush flip. Ah, <sighs> brush flip. <laughs> Do you know what I really hate? When you buy a car and realise you can't actually open the fuel flap to put fuel in it. Did come with a full tank of fuel though. Winning and losing both. They don't move like gangsters. Why do they walk like gangsters? Why they don't move like gangsters? Why do they act like gangsters? Don't want to get my hands dirty next time I open the bonnet. Keep your thumbs clean. To be fair, which is a rarity, aero catches that actually work. Oh, <laughs> uh, I used a hammer to make them work better. I'll give them a little persuading. You know what about this car, James? What's... It's got a badge here, it's upside down. I didn't put them on. But... Are you... I forgive you. Is ready for when you stick it on its roof and be the right way up? You know it's a BMW motorsport car when it's on its roof. You still figure out what it is. Yo, strictly high grade and that's the motto. Unless the plug is off. See the mistake Dan's made there? Put his bucket train the wrong way. No, no, no. No matter what handed you are. <laughs> so, fresh soap to the car. You come off the car, rinse it off, make your way back. That's the trick. Top tip. Start from the, the top, way, way down. Why have you not started from the roof? Because when you work on a really dirty car, you want to start on the areas where swirls will be the most visible. That's my logic behind it. So I always start straight on the bonnet. Because I've got the freshest solution, I'll remove the dirt from there first, because if this car does get mild or swelled, whilst this is a drift basher, we're not going to keep it perfect, but it's still good to follow the normal procedure and correct procedure. So bonnet first, wash that down, then up onto the roof. I go bonnet, screen, dip, dip, roof, dip dip back end then i'll come down the side to about trim level then i'll go down to the midpoint level and then at the very end you do the grubbiest bits around the bottom so it's a bit of a weird way to work you are working top to bottom but slightly around the other way <laughs> oh you start <laughs> i'm well devastated with myself for that i never drop wash mitts <sighs> <laughs> on camera as well. Me too, just in case you drop another one. Oh, <laughs> he's dicing with death him. I think he's still on probation. <laughs> yeah, I can never doubt myself, I know better. All of you critics be acting like you know better. Blowing the smoke, but I know when it just settles. I'm in my element, it's evident that this level to the game. All of those dark nights I got there, breaking my back to make it out, got me feeling like rain. I ain't never need your help, I know you wishing me well. A penny for your thoughts, but seeing no change. I snap for the sun like Diddy. The rich has got a mad ass son, I'm like Billy. I ain't never switch up, whole team with me. But known for my city like OAGZ. Set the pace as long as you finish. Consumers find a way inside your business. Babble if they try to dabble in it, and they hate the fact that they may have to win. Got to wash his tip, didn't he, dirty boy? With a fight like this, and they hope you fall and they bring you miss, but it's all in the risk. I got you with the switch. You know. I'm in the zone. Give me the throne. One shot, that's all that you got. That's all that I know. Put on the can. 155 on the road. You could be a friend of me, an enemy. Keep that same old energy, cause I know. I'm in my element. Ooh, yeah. I'm in my element. Ooh, yeah. I'm in my element. Okay, so now that we've removed the sharpest type of contaminant on the vehicle, we're going to remove the largest type of contaminant which regularly found on a car, and that is tar. In this case, being a drift car, we've probably got quite a bit of it quite high up. So we're going to treat the lowers with obliterate. There'll probably be some rubber up there as well, which this will take care of. Then we're going to wash the car again to neutralise the solvent, clay bar it, rinse it, get it in the bay, and then we'll be able to play with the machine polishers. That's all that I know. Put on the gas. 155 on the road. Is that fancy sponge thing you got going on there? That is a fibre applicator. There's actually not a lot fancy about it. That's picked up a few bits of tar though. And that would have got caught in your clay bar, dragged all around the place and made some horrific marks. Ooh, yeah. Keep that thing in the deep. 
God, I can't believe you broke my repair. That was a top quality repair with high quality products. Double sided tape. So now we're gonna move on to the last stage of decom, which is the clay bar. Traditionally, this was like the only decom stage back in the day that would be it you just go straight in but nowadays we use liquids first because they cause less marring scratching there's less chance of you dragging anything around on the paint but good old clay bar removes one thing that nothing else can and that is organic matter so things like tree sap if there's overspray as well clay bars are king at removing that you'd probably want a higher grade you can get coarser grades we only sell one grade that is because we sell products to enthusiasts and enthusiasts very rarely need a heavy grade clay and if they do use a heavy grade clay what they're going to need to do is machine polish after because those scratches you put in will be a little bit too deep for you to remove just with a hand polish <laughs> quite black for what it is that could be overspray someone could have been painting some of these parts near it or something we could be picking that up those black dots there those indicate tar especially that pull through there now you should really remove all of the tar with a tar and glue remover and on a day-to-day -day road car you would but given what this thing does it's probably flicking it up all over the place one thing that is a blessing is the tar remover is going to soften that to make it easier to remove with your clay bar. What you do, once your clay's looking a bit like this, you don't use the other side. You fold it dirty side to dirty side, knead it out into a disc again. Oh, it's a bit cold for this, but I'm trying my best. This is not slick and smooth for video, is it? And then you go again. Look at that water etching. So that is where the turbo sits right under here. So all that dirty water that's come on and we've been banging it off the limiter has uh, cooked all that water into that paint and etched it. That will machine out. It will take a bit of work, but we'll get that out. Right, now we are in the bay and we can actually see what we're dealing with. As you can probably recognize, this is not the bay that you're used to seeing on the channel because now we have moved back to our HQ. We've got all of our business all under one roof and we have just finished building this brand new bay here. It's a bit of a different look for us, but it's very clean. It's a lovely space to work in. We've made it just big enough for two or three detailers plus our film crew and media guys to be in here all together, not get under each other's feet, but not be so big that we feel a little bit lost and exposed the lighting is all adaptable so we can actually change the color of the lights around the top to match the car we're working on which serves no purpose for detailing but i thought it was cool now it's in here the car's in a bit of a sorry state we're not going to do a full correction on this it would be an absolute waste of our time and energy it is a drift car after all and it's my practice car and given last time i went out and practiced and crashed it into the tires probably not the best idea to spend too much time getting it looking perfect one thing i do want to address though is all of these watermarks on the bonnet i don't remember them being there before so i think we've got it hot and cooked in that dirty water into the bonnet fingers crossed that's not too difficult to remove i do want to clean the interior up the interior is in a bit of a mess because it was muddy where we were i'm going to finish off the engine bay cloth and bottle use a bit of steam You'll notice when we opened the bonnet, it didn't come up that great from just that rinse, so that needs a bit more attention. But first, we're gonna get it taped up, hit this with some pads and compound, 
see what gives us the result, and then we'll get on to some of the finer details. Yeah. Someone at the door, John, now I'm here to stay Tell me who the fuck gonna face the music More brick laying that screen time Been cutting back on the daily usage Long road for the road dog Always tape a car so you can still open the doors up Some people will go like straight across But if you need to pop a door Because maybe they're not lining up right And you don't want to risk burning through If you tape them so you can still open everything up You can always pop a door, put a brace in there Get the edges even if someone wants to start work early on the interior and you're still chasing some bits out, it just means you can still do everything you want to do. Nothing worse than opening the door and half the side of the tape comes off. It stresses me out. What we're going to do with this car is just a one stage enhancement. So what I'm using is our Pro Series Medium Pad with our Pro Series Medium Compound. Normal passes, as you would, spread the compound out ramp your speed up a little. I'm working at about speed four and getting good results at the moment. So up to speed four, multiple passes till you see that polish turn clear and go a little more oily. That's when you've broken down all of the abrasives in it. Then just buffing that away. It's leaving me with a reasonable finish. Now this car is a patchwork quilt of different paint. As you can see, there's blistering on the over fenders from when they've been painted. The doors seem to have been painted a little bit better, but there's a lot going on on these rear quarter over fenders. The roof's quite scratched up. I don't know if this maybe once lived under a cover. Realistically, if I wanted to get all of those marks out of there, I'm gonna need a wall pad, really heavy cutting. To be honest with you, I just don't see the point for the use of this car. I just wanna knock 80% of the swells out make it look nice and glossy. We're gonna get some protection on there, which means the next time we come around to cleaning it after the next drift day, it's just gonna be as simple as giving it a wash down, drying it off, and then we get back out. <laughs> Yeah, everybody get a road on. Check artist credits on BMI. I'm just too kind to expose y'all. I see a team with a ghost sign and question if y'all ever wrote songs. All enemies of mine are band study. Please don't test me. I'm a know it all. Got platinum saws in the vault collecting dust. If we talk about showing up, then y'all attendance suck. Both feet on the gas pedal, bitch. I ain't letting up. Started singing, they fell in love. Came a long way from being talentless. Be anything. I was challenged in. Pressure turned me into a precious cut. Blood lights in a flood of change. 30 city tour in a ton of states. I can't wait till I up the leads from the miners in my arm come of age. Seen a lot of people playing seeds to the drink, grown patient and run away. I cultivated, irrigated it, had the growth amazed, and I let it change. Oh yeah. Been laughed at before. Been a little bro, not the same one, same pass me the torch. I ain't passing out shit. The metalwork's coming up lovely. Can't say the same about the fiberglass with all that blistering. It's just gonna get a brush over and a gloss up and I'll do a bit more on the metal work. Let's attack the worst bit. <laughs> Story of my life, innit? <laughs> no one even won. <laughs> My <laughs> bloody machine polisher's not plugged in. I'm going to blame one of you for standing on my wire again. Nobody is a friend of me, fam, roof deeper than I have a green clear. I said, man, I've got a separate creed by any means. I'm a step past seated. I'm in a cut with the gang, gang, damn, y'all can't stop the pain. Something, at least. That's what I think it was. That's what I think it was. That's what I think it was. Multitude of things. That is dirty water going on there and the heat has cooked it in, the paint swells and contracts with the heat. I don't know how this car's been painted, I don't know its full history, but from just looking at it, I would hazard a guess that this has not been done properly in a booth. It's not the worst job I've ever seen, but it's far from the best. Um, I think that paint is a little bit soft still. Um, if you feel it with your now, actually, it feels a bit soft and horrible. I think as that engine's getting roasting hot, because someone was bashing it off the rev limiter, the paint's got really hot, and yeah, cooked it in, etched it. Oh, 
trying to jump and what a deck. Yeah, that's a little bit better. So, the medium pad and the medium compound didn't quite have enough bite to get to the bottom of that etching. It is still slightly visible, but I fear that's gonna keep coming back every time we take it out, especially if it's wet and we're using it as a winter bash car. So it's usually gonna be wet when we take it out. I think the heat from the engine's gonna warm up and cook in any water that goes on the bonnet. Usually these drift bashes are in dirty car parks, basically most of the time, or well, the ones we're gonna go to are. And I think I need to leave enough to play with to get that out in the future. Ultimately, this car will end up getting a full respray, but before that, I need to get used to how to drive it. Um, so I'm gonna probably need to machine polish this once or twice more to keep it looking shiny at least, maybe not perfectly corrected, but half decent. So yeah, that's about as far as I'm gonna push. It looks good. It's a five foot car, maybe 10. My phone started jumping, what a day. Swear to God, I need it now, I can't afford to wait. I just had a fan hit me up from Kuwait. Told him this would happen, now we're not a minute late. Seen him down bad, now they tryna hate. Same one that tried to hit me for the race. Got a mail, now they coming with a place. Check the numbers, fam, I swear I'm getting paid. I'm a Don, just like the Perrier. It's one time when I'm looking at a face. On the low, like I'm Got a check and I bought myself a place They get some money and they blow it on bait I don't flex but I'm pushing all the weight Told them all I swear I got it's what it tastes So while I've been doing the engine bay, Dan's jumped on the interior Given that a quick clean up That actually got in a really bad state as well So that's taken quite a bit of work That looked like the engine bay But all the footwells were full of mud and water And it was disgusting That's all out of clean and the dust down It's looking good all that's left for us to do now is just dust the last bits of compound dust from the exterior of the car, just giving it a quick wipe down with some finale. Then I think we're gonna lay some protection on it, gonna dress the tires, do the glass, and job should be a good one. Now I know earlier on I said we were gonna put a ceramic system on this car, but after getting a bit closer with the paint, I think I'd be wasting my time to be honest with you. So I'm gonna lay down a wax. We're using Fusion. This is our most durable wax that we offer. It's a synthetic hybrid. So it's like a paste sealant with natural elements wax in there as well. Gonna lay this down a panel at a time, buff it off after. This should be more than enough to help keep this car clean and make it easier next time we come around to cleaning it. Hey, what you need, yeah. Man, I got it, wow. What you say, hey. We about it, uh. Get the cream, yeah. Why you sucking out the top, boy, you capping What you need, hey, yeah, I got it Woo! With the team, yeah, we about it all Get the cream, yeah, why you slacking See that? That? Oh, it's on the outside, hear it? Everyone quiet? Hear it? I'm going to show you a top tip Double O grade wire wall Where was we? I've lost it now. Right there. Little bit of crystal was lube. Voila. Don't look at me, look at that. Huh? No scratches on the glass. No more overspray. Obviously, you can't use that on paint, but that is a great little tip. If you've got overspray on glass, yeah, does the job. So just like that, the E36 is looking a lot fresher than it did this morning. Now, by no means is this car perfect. It's actually a long way from it. But being a detailer means you're gonna come up against challenges. And I quite like these cars because it makes you adapt what you're doing, what you use, and you find that level. It humbles you a little bit because you can't chase perfection like you can on a newer car that's maybe not had such a hard life. I'm pretty happy with this now, and I'd be proud to roll it off a trailer at the next day we go to. So with that said, all that's left to do is show you the finished results. <laughs> <laughs>